Good morning or uh, mid-morning at this point. It's 1030, watching the surf. The swell's coming up. We've got big waves to talk about, especially on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Actually, it starts tomorrow, but the swell's going to come up. It doesn't get too humongous, but it gets big. And we've had so many issues along the coast over these last few weeks with people getting getting close to the water. I think some, something's changed since COVID. More people go to the beach. Maybe more people work from home. But you've got bodies on the beach that it's fine, but when it gets big, like right now, this ocean beach is not that big, but when it gets big, it'll take you out. And one of the things I've learned over 45 years of surfing this beach, which is in particular probably the most dangerous beach, I'm going to say the most dangerous beach on the planet Earth. Why? Because it's close to San Francisco. It's got an urban sprawl of a million people within a nine iron away from the beach. And you've got these huge tides going through the gate. And then you've got this continu- this um, ability for the, it to be a magnet for swells, which it is. So when you look at it right now, you go, yeah, it'd be a good day to go to the beach. It would be, but it, it, it'd be fine. But you wouldn't want to go into this water, especially without a wetsuit. And what people do, and this is, mark my words, this is what happens in a lot of these cases. They go out, they, they bring their cool ranchers or their ranch waters or whatever. I don't even know what guys, kids drink anymore. But they go out and they wait out, especially the women, because boys kind of just go behind a bush. But the, the gals will tend to wait out, right? Which is uh, totally understandable. But that's the, how you get in trouble, especially in this upcoming week. So please, please, please be careful, crab fishermen, all you guys. We'll talk more about swell. Um, they were going to have the pipe masters yesterday. They didn't do it. Uh, the Eddie Akai window is open, which is the big wave event in, in, in Hawaii. But the swell models are all indicating significant swell increases, especially for us on Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and it'll get up there. So here's pipeline right now. Um, and you can see it's kind of just wobbly, wobbly. That's Pipeline's a funny wave because it breaks. It's very popular with photographers because see how close it breaks the shore? Like there's pretty good swell. But when a big, a big wave will come in and it'll show a 10, 12 foot face right here. Like you can see that lump, it breaks really close to shore. So for photographers, they, uh, they love it. Okay, so let's see back to Ocean Beach. Um, that's not fire, we'll go to Mavericks. We'll go to Mavericks and check it out. And right now it's just showing, remember like yesterday, it's just showing a little bit, um, but it will be showing by, by Friday and Saturday, probably by tomorrow as well. Um, so we got surf along the coast, dangerous. Then we got rain and snow coming as we go through time here. It's been hazy around here lately and you can see that, that haze, that's an unstable environment. Um, that's changing as evidenced by these high cirrus clouds, which are an indication of weather out in the Pacific, and there is weather out in the Pacific. We know that, number one, because we got big surf coming along the coast. We know that, number two, because we have satellite imagery, but we know that, number three, because you got cirrus clouds moving out ahead of the front, right? The cirrus clouds are so high, there's a friction-free environment there. Not friction-free, but friction, the, the, the cold fronts right down along the ground, they hit topography, They, you know, anything under... 2,000 feet has turbulence impact or uh, passed onto it, not turbulence, but friction passed onto it from the land surface, from buildings, from trees, from mountains. But when you get up there at 20,000 feet, 18,000 feet, the, the clouds come up from the storm and then they push out ahead of it because they're moving freely with the jet stream. So mare's tail, tail cirrus, mare's tail as in horse, showing up. Um, let's look at this because we can. This is... Um, Let's see this morning getting up. And this is uh, San Francisco waking up. No fog at the coast. There is valley fog. There will be a frost advisory again tonight. And there's that cloud cover coming in. That's lower cloud stuff. Boy, isn't that beautiful? You see a little bit of valley fog, right? Popping off in uh, coming out of Mill Valley. Probably a little bit of that. There's a frost advisory this morning. There'll be a frost advisory tomorrow morning. So we look at the satellite image. And let's see if I can push this way. And I guess what I'm pointing out here is, if, if this cursor drives you nuts, let me know. It drives me nuts, too. I haven't figured out a better cursor look yet. Um, so here's, here's the system. Here we are. Here's the next system. That's for Thursday. Looks like we're going to get a little wet. And then there's a Saturday system in here. And then there's a break. And then there's more systems behind it. There's three systems, which we'll see in the model. This is the valley fog showing up. And you, I don't even have to point at it because you know right where it is. You also see the high cirrus clouds coming in, don't you? See that? See how they're moving? Moves a little bit quicker than the stuff down at the surface. And you can tell the valley fog because it's not reacting to the upper level winds and it's 
funneling into the low-lying areas. And as a kid who grew up north of Chico, up in Paradise, that valley fog will that'll, that'll mess you up, man. Visibility, certainly, but also just how cold it is, man. Like, it's, like, really nice up in Grass Valley, but down 1,000 feet, down towards um, Sacramento, it's 55 degrees and kind of, ugh. Okay, so put, I'm going to put a loop, a circle around this. There's the ridge, and we're going to watch the GFS flatten that ridge out, and then, bam, right there, that's... Thursday morning looks wet. That mod, the model's kind of ramped up on Thursday. Thursday morning looks pretty damp for that morning commute. As potentially as far south as San Jose. A lot of rain, no, but the door is open. Now we push forward again. Here comes that Saturday event we've been talking about. That's a nice looking system. That's a foot of snow in the mountains. That's winter storm warnings. That's um, chaining up on 50 and 80, and that's a foot of snow. And then look, the, the jet stream stays flat. See, it kind of pops up there. But then it pops in again there. That's the 20 or the 18th of December. I mean, this is a good progressive series. Does it mean it'll happen? Hopefully. And you know what I like? Look at that. That's on the right before Christmas, 21st. What I like about this pattern, what I just showed you, is that it's there's breaks. It's not an atmospheric river type event. It's separate, you know, three clearly separate weather systems. More than that, actually, but three in the upcoming <clears throat> few days um then they keep spacing themselves out which the thing about northern california we can handle a bunch of water i mean, i'm not saying we're, these are regular sized storms but if these were massive but if you get breaks you can handle cal no not southern california but northern california can handle a lot of water and we've seen that okay this is precipitation uh i i you know yesterday i saw the gfs i go they're a little overblown on this thursday thing but now um, things the other models are catching up, so the GFS may have been on this early. So here we are for Thursday morning, and then that's Thursday by lunchtime or so. So you're kind of clearing out. So Thursday morning's commute looks a little wet, and the potential for, I mean, if you're painting or something like that, wait till the afternoon. That's a quick blow by. Here comes Saturday. That looks pretty juicy for sure. And then what do we got here? This is the next one. This is a, a, a Monday afternoon. And then this is the next one here, right? So we're on, it's on. The five day forecast sort of shows that uh, the storm door is open. We'll keep an eye on the swells. The tides are big too. So you got some pretty significant tides that will you know, make it more dangerous. I keep going back to the ocean because for some reason, more and more people are getting in trouble. And I suspect it does have to do with COVID, more people working from home and going, I'm gonna go to the beach, right? Northern California beaches, gnarly. They will mess you up. I've been messed up. I know everybody I know has been messed up, and we surf like a lot. Um, it, it's just really it, it requires more respect than I think a lot of folks give it. Uh, and you got to change that mindset. You got to go, oh man, this even even in the summer, but this time of year, change the mindset because when there's the last thing I'll say about the swells, when the swell does come in like this, like right now, Ocean Beach is surfable, it's manageable. But what's happening is because there's swell building behind it every 30 40 50 hour two hours a set comes in and it's not like the other sets it's giant right it's not seven foot it's 13 foot and that happens and so when swells are building like they are now the ocean very dangerous because it looks mellow and then bam it'll mess you up okay i know because i've been messed up <laughs> all right we'll talk to you tomorrow